What is up everyone? Jake here from Monsters and Munchkins. It has been a while. There'll be a channel update video coming soon, but we are back to making content for a bunch of different games. In the channel's absence, A Song of Ice and Fire Minis, from Quote Me or Not, has become one of our favorite games to play, so be prepared to see a lot more content for that. Today's video is going to be the first in what I hope is a series of TTS narrated battle reports. Um, full disclaimer, and I know I'm going to bring this up at least like 80 or so times in the video. This is filmed before the patch. Um, this game was actually like, I did the recording and the filming right before the patch was announced. So I wanted to get this out there anyway, because I do think there's some good like overall gameplay things. I don't think the game is going to fundamentally change that much, but I'm sure a lot of the units seen in this video will. So just keep that in mind. Disclaimer, pre-patch, my word isn't God, my word isn't law, take everything with a grain of salt. So, I do hope that this will be the first in a bunch of battle reports. Um, these are going to be more like tactics reports, where I just talk about the important parts of the game and big things that happen, rather than just uploading a two-hour video to YouTube. It's great that we get to play over TTS, but the big downside is that the games tend to drag on for quite a long time, and I didn't feel great about just uploading and editing. Just... I, I didn't feel great about just putting a two-hour game on the channel when most of TTS play, unlike real-life play, is just spending forever measuring out little things and spending five minutes deciding whether I should take bags or letters or horses when the full tactics board is open. So, anyway, I think we're going to stick to this sort of tactics report style for the videos. Today's game was against Edgehopper, Brian's Targaryens. He also filmed this game, so there'll be a link to his battle report in the description down below. This is a list he was practicing for Adepticon. He was also practicing Random Terrain, so we did that as well. This is my first time playing on Random Terrain, so, you know, take it for what it is. To be honest, I didn't love it. Um, I understand that the purpose of Random Terrain is to break up the things we see a lot. Like, you see some new players playing, or some inexperienced players playing, and you'll frequently see, like... Corpse Pile, Weirwood Tree, Corpse Pile, Weirwood Tree, which is a terrible formation, even if you're a panicked army, um, or you're trying not to get panicked bombed, that's not what you want to set up, unless you're going, like, against a full mel casino, and you want more spaces you can go on the board, um, but I just didn't really vibe with it, I'm someone who really enjoys the terrain part of the game, it really helps out some lists, like Greyjoy's, with a lot of Bowman, and knowing what terrain to pick. But it was interesting, and, you know, it was good to try once. Uh, his lists that he was running, so he had two lists. The first was a Marshland list, which I wasn't worried about at all. The second was a Drogo list, which was very similar to a list that was popular about a year ago. This list consisted of Drogo and Blood Riders, Bolton Flayed Men, the Thraki Vets, Jorah Solo Rider, and his three NCUs were Illyrio, Danny, and Tycho, bringing him to seven activations. In my opinion, there are a couple of weaknesses with this list. For starters, again, pre-patch, Blood Riders are not a fantastic unit at all. I understand they, in quotes, fix Targ's token play, but, you know, in reality, they really just don't do anything. Uh, the reason Drogo and Flaidman is much better than Blood Riders is because Blood Riders can never one-shot anything, ever. Literally any unit in the game, Blood Riders cannot walk up to it. Okay, any 12-wound unit in the game, right, chariots, wolves, exceptions. Drogo and Blood Riders cannot walk up to a 12-wound unit and kill it. The maximum amount of wounds they can do is 11, and the tray will still be alive. As someone playing a spammy faction like Greyjoy's, I know that a shit unit in front of Drogo is going to survive at least one hit, and that's huge. Being able to do that math, taking something out of the game that I don't need to think about, means that I am starting off with a pretty big advantage, in my opinion. Drogo and Flayedman, on the other chance, while they don't guarantee the one-shot, it's certainly a lot scarier now. You're charging in with critical blow and intimidating presence. A flank charge into a weak unit like Greyjoy Bowman all of a sudden becomes a lot more scarier, because now there's a pretty good chance that they might die, I might not have what is dead, I might not have a way to respond to that unit. It can get out of hand real fast. Again, patch coming, 
Blood Riders and Flight Run almost definitely getting changed. The big weakness about a list like this, and I don't believe this will change with the patch, is that it is seven activations. At a tournament like Adepticon at higher tables, I think <laughs> the best list, the best chance a list like this has of setting up a big impactful play. What I mean by that is at the end of the round, you charge with a unit, then top of the next round, you're going first, you're able to take the swords and set up a kill. Those are the type of big impactful plays a list like this wants to be making. But at seven activations, it's just going to struggle to pull that off because a lot of factions are sitting at at least eight. And there's some factions like Starks, Greyjoys, Free Folk obviously can get into the stratosphere, but they can hit nine activation lists, Night's Watch as of right now, and they're just not going to let you set those plays up. So that's that's a pretty big weakness. At the moment, being Blood Riders don't do anything, I would have just moved Drogo over to the Flademen, and I would have put in a unit of Stormcrows with an Unsullied Officer, but they said Relentless is changing, so... You know, we'll see what a list like this looks like after the patch. Now, I was playing Greyjoys. Try as I might, I cannot seem to kick the habit of playing this army, even though they are awful. It's always really weird going into a game as a Greyjoy player and being able to pick holes in somebody else's list, finding all the flaws in it, while at the same time being keenly aware that Greyjoys as a faction is filled with so much scornergy and clunky mechanics and bad morale and armor that I know it is always going to be an uphill battle. Simply because I figured my opponent was going to play Drogo, because why wouldn't you? I went with my Roos Bolton list. My other list that I've had actually a lot of success with is a 9 activation Asha list, um, but it relies on Relentless, and the whole list just kind of lives on this like razor edge of trying not to die, and that's just not what you want to play into Targaryens, because realistically, Targaryen game plan is Drogo go into unit, Drogo roll well, and if that game plan starts going well for them, then my game plan starts falling apart real fast. This Roos list is similar to a lot of the other good Greyjoy lists that you see. I know Mikkel rocks something similar with Euron. I played with Euron for a long time. I really love Euron. His cards are a ton of fun. But after Martells came out, I switched over to Roos Bolton. Euron really just wasn't doing enough in this list. This list is not running Silenced Men, which Euron really wants to push so discord. In my opinion, none of Euron's cards are amazing. They're pretty good. Cunning Ploy is a fantastic card, but so discord is like his big ability, and you really want to be able to push that. Um, and unfortunately, it just wasn't doing enough without the Silenced Men, and a Flayed Man has no secrets. It's such a game-divining card when you learn how to use it. It's good into literally every single matchup. And it just defines the game when that card goes off. So I really saw no reason not to switch over to Roos for this list. He does write, like, Fear Keeps a Man Alive, kind of a dead card sometimes. But the payoff is, is, is really worth it. So getting into my list, I had uh, Roos the Goose in a unit of Bolton Blackguard. I don't like defensive units usually. I'm just not a fan. They just don't do enough. But Blackguard are kind of funny. Because what Blackguard do is, first of all, your opponents really don't want to attack them, which is fine. Like, there's a ton of... I, I don't want to attack Wardens either. I'm not going to go out of my way to try to kill them. It's just not worth the effort. But Blackguard, if they roll okay, with Vicious and Roos's Intimidating Presence and Spread Fear, can start to sometimes maybe do something. So, out of all the defensive units in the game, this is one of the ones I hate the least. Uh, following that up, we had Asha Carl Trappers. Again, not a huge fan of defensive units, but this one is at least somewhat synergistic with the deck. And Warcry, at the time of filming this, was a worthwhile enough ability that I wanted it. I had a point left over. Expert Duelist is good into matchups like Night's Watch. Also, the unit just has a ton of token play with Trappers tools, which I think will probably see some increase in value post-patch. So I was enjoying it. Um, I, I always love when I have the six points to fit that unit into a list. Following that up, we have the reason to play Greyjoy. So we've got two Ironborn Bowmen. This unit is absolutely fantastic at four points. Four point units, already crazy busted. We all go online literally every single day and see people complaining about Free Folk, um, which, yeah, Free Folk are busted. But the fact that Greyjoys have access to a four-point unit with a decent ranged attack, which can exploit flanks, and especially when you get into higher activation lists, can just really start putting in work. It's, it's the reason to play the faction at the moment. 
As for the NCUs, we have what is like the synergistic holy trinity of Greyjoy NCUs. Baron's good when you're running units that want Baron, but when you're not running Baron, you really can't beat these. So we've got Wendigod. Wendemir is absolutely incredible for four points. He gives you a craster on demand. He gives you a replace effect when there's a shitty zone open like the crown, or you want to block the crown because you're sitting on morale eight. And the three inch shift really helps guarantee either flanks or charges. Then we've got Roderick. Good old Hot Rod helps us get the garbage cards out of our hands and fish through our deck for some better cards. Notably, you're usually looking for like a We Do Not Sow or What Is Dead. With the addition of Roost Bolton, you now have another card which you're happy to see, which is Fear Keeps Him in No, not Fear Keeps Him in Alive, uh, which is A Flayed Man Has No Secrets. Finally, we've got Peter Baelish. Baelish is busted. Um, he's probably going to get changed, but Greyjoys love the ability to be able to say, I'm going to control the swords. I'm planning on not dying when I take actions with this unit. A big part of the Greyjoy game plan, as we're going to talk about in this video, is not dying, trying to make it into the late games where they can score. And Baelish is just really going to help facilitate that when you've got what is dead on possibly two different units. Another massive implication that Peter Baelish has is that into the Martell matchup, you need him to block Doran. I'm absolutely terrified if Baelish gets nerfed um, for the Martell reign of terror that I think we could see with this patch. Um, not looking forward to that. I hate playing against Martells. All right, so on to deployment, round one, game setup, all that good stuff. For this mission, we were playing... Dark Wings, Dark Words. You all know how this one goes. There are mission cards, which can be swapped out for reserve ones, and you can score the mission cards as early as round one. There's three objectives across the middle of the board. They're scored as normal, starting on round two. So like I said previously, this was my first game playing Random Terrain. Uh, we rolled up, we rolled uh, three pieces of terrain. Uh, we rolled a bog, a palisade, and a low wall. None of the terrain was super impactful this game. I wasn't super happy with how the Palisade got placed. That didn't really... I usually like to angle them more, so I can do this dance around them thing with the Bowman. Um, that, but, I mean, I was playing against Targaryens anyway, so not always... Terrain isn't always that impactful in that matchup. For my deployment, I dropped Roos first, and I also dropped the Flayed Men. I dropped them both kind of centrally. Um, slow units and Cav, I like to drop towards the center, because a slow unit on a flank, you've said, okay, this unit is largely going to be irrelevant for the rest of this game. You can just ignore it. It's never catching up with you. And like I said, being Blackguard can sometimes maybe kind of do something almost. I like having them in the middle, so they can't be just completely ignored. Then, same thing with Cav. I like Cav in the middle because Cav can redeploy themselves. My opponent kind of wound up all dropping all of his cav towards the left side of the table, so I dropped my bows on the opposite side, and I left Asha on my left flank to support the flayed men, thinking that my opponent would do what targs need to do to win the game, which is focus all of his units on one side and try to collapse a flank, and as he's trying to do that, usually what I would try to do is swing my archers around to start shooting into combat, as you're going to see, that's not exactly what happened in this game. To start things off, like, I was so disappointed with my opening hand i drew both what is deads and uh one iron price again that's why we have hot rod in this list my opponent took first turn i was happy with that these mission games uh, they're either super slow or you're playing dark wings dark words and you just score a ton of points and you're going to the last round so i wanted the even turn tempo in this mission in particular we had a super standard uh, first turn. The missions that were active were score on swords and score on horse and center objective. Uh, the reserve mission was uh, be engaged with, uh, was the uh, combat unit. If it enemy unit destroys your unit, you put victory points on it and expend tokens. To kick things off, we see the usual play patterns we see with NCUs. My opponent put Danny on letters. Um, then I went Wendemar on the crown. He obviously, he weakened my flightman. And then my opponent put Tycho on bags to block. At this point, I passed with Roderick. I didn't really want to give my opponent any victory points when I didn't have to. Swords is iffy against targs anyway, because, you know, uh, field control. And 
uh, sorry, horses is iffy because of field control. And what is swords doing for me this early in the game? So pass with Roderick. And I also used a Roderick token pitching that atrocious hand. I drew a slightly better one. It's still not what you want to see early game. I had a raiding call, a prey on fear, a we do not so, and the Kraken's wrath. Raiding call's fine. It's just going to be used to put a pillage out on Asha. Prey on fear, and we do not so, and Kraken's wrath. I can never bring myself to pitch a we do not so, but like, prey on fear and Kraken's wrath. Just get them out of here. So my opponent actually activated his Flayed Men next, which did not feel like the right thing to do when he could have passed with an NCU. He actually commented that he was feeling pressure from me because I was out activating him, which, you know, is what higher activation lists do. Um, and, but I'm super confused as to why then he activated his Flayed Men. That's just not the move. Um, anyway, uh, I passed with Baelish. My opponent passed, passed with Lirio at that point. So pretty much then I started swinging up my Bowman to try to like make this, to take the board from across and kind of make it the sideways game that winds up happening quite a bit. Um, this is also the point where he uses uh, Raiding Call to give Asha the pillage. I really thought this is the way the game was going to go. So my opponent then pushed up his Vets. I swung up with the other Bowman. He then just kind of did the like inch up thing with Jorah because you don't want to lose Jorah. I have... Like, I was remember when I was getting my badge and I was playing Balon, I had um, Price of Failure in my hand and I just blew Pajora. So, you know, be careful with your Jorahs. My opponent was really good about that in the early game. I then pretty much uh, moved up my Flayed Men, and then I moved Asha to cover my Flayed Men's flank. This is something I do quite a bit. Trappers are really good at protecting your important units. When I play my Euron Silence Men list, I'll usually try to like throw down some bogs, march Euron up the middle, have the Drownman nearby to give him rerolls, and then Asha can kind of be there to protect his flank, because a really good way to deal with like Baron on a unit is to just come in, make them fail a panic check, then attack them again. But if I've got Asha there, now you can't get into my flank. You need to go through this super annoying unit first. It's it's kind of the peak thing Shavers want to be doing. Even when you don't have Baron, you charging Flayed Men in the front, they're effectively Wardens, right? That's not a super easy unit to kill without Sundering, which Targaryens don't really have access to at all. So blocking the flank is kind of the way you play into them. So here's where things got a little bit interesting. My opponent wound up swinging up his Drogo all the way out into my right flank. I was actually, this wasn't what I expected, this wasn't what I had set up for, but I wasn't upset about this. My bows would be out of the game at this point, but they're both at full health, and you remember the earlier conversation we had about Blood Riders. If I draw what is dead, Drogo will be killing Bowman, and maybe Roos, maybe he gets to Roos, for, for four turns while I can effectively go after the rest of his army, and the Vets and the Flayed Men are the units I'm scared of anyway. Expensive units cannot trade down like this, so I was happy to play into this game plan. Being the Greyjoy plan is to survive. Sometimes for that to happen, a unit like Bowman has to die. That's fine. I still play a bit cautiously, but here's where I made one mistake. I Warcried with Asha, and then I activated Roos. Um, I had my commander give up his action to swap horses to the tokens objective, I should have waited because then I wouldn't given my opponent the chance to remember his war cry, which he forgot. Um, I think forgets a few more times and goes back and does. Does and after that, um, again, just shuffle up my flame men to kind of keep the planner surviving. So in the first round, we both pass our war cries, expend the tokens, and score one victory point. Going into round two, I pitched Kraken's Wrath and Fear Keeps Men Alive. Neither card was helping me, and I didn't want to blow my last Roddy token when I felt like I was going to be needing it later into the game, so it was time for those cards to go. At this point, I drew Finger Dance and Iron Price. Finger Dance would get dropped on my middle bows at some point this turn. My opening play wound up pretty much playing itself out. My bows would need to shift out up to get front shots on Drogo, which is so not worth it. So I petered swords and used letters. What a classic move. Weakening Drogo. In the meantime, uh, here I drew my last Raiding Call, which would eventually get Asha another pillage, and I drew a Flayed Man Has No Secrets. I'm always happy to see this card, it's the reason I play this list, and oh boy, would it put in some turn this uh, put in some work this turn. Um, after this, my opponent used horses to move up Drogo. I, n this wasn't a play I particularly cared about, no matter what, like going from 5.8s to 6.9s, 
wasn't really that big of a deal. I'm not too bothered by a flank charge. The only minor downside is my other bows wouldn't have a target. It's really neither here nor there. I then used uh, letters with Roderick going above hand size. I discarded the Iron Price, because who needs that card? Um, and I drew Fear Keeps Men Alive and Krakenstrath. So after all of that went down, my opponent just passed with Tycho. At this point, I really question my next move. This wasn't something I was happy with. I... <laughs> I understand what I was thinking. I wanted the Wendemir token, and I didn't want to feel like I was wasting the Weedy Not So. But at that point, I either should have just gotten the Wendemir token, or I should have used the Weedy Not So on my bows. I think I didn't want to feel like I was throwing the card away. But activating my bows, regardless of how you think about it, 100% the wrong decision. They should have just waited for them to get charged, because I have activation advantage. It's obvious what he's going to do. And then they could have just retreated into the bog with their action. So, I don't know. Um, I did two wounds. Not that it winds up mattering. So, then, obvious play is obvious. My opponent did Mega Drogo Charge, Fire and Blood, whole shebang. However, I kept taking letters, so he was weakened. Um, I only lost one rank for my Bowman, which is like a Greyjoy player's dream. That's amazing. Um... So then uh, going into my turn, I drew off of Wendemir and uh, healed two to my bows. So they were only missing two wounds. So again, they're probably going to survive another hit unless something goes crazy. Here I pulled Blessed with Stone, Blessed with Steel, and pitched Fear Keeps Me Alive. Here is where I make another misplay. I think I just forgot how to play the game um, in round two. I swung my other bows around to face Drago thinking I was going to shoot them and... I, I don't know what I was thinking. I was going to do more damage to my own Bowman. Shooting Drogo will do nothing for me. It's worse for me. Um, do as I say, not as I do. This was a terrible, terrible play. I I should have been pressuring the center of the table with my bows. Like Bowman, you know, do. My opponent wound up burning an Assault Orders on his next activation, and he rolled really well this time. He put me down to three. Um, and then I just activated Wendy and got another token. Ryan did uh, move up with his Jorah, and, you know, really obvious what he was doing. He was trying to set up the Wombo Combo with his vets coming into my trappers, uh, give them rerolls, precision on the range attacks, just come in and blow up the unit. Um, so I moved Asha back, because I wasn't ready to lose her. Ever. It's my favorite unit. Um, so I wanted him to have to extend himself if he was going to have to come get to me, and it worked. Um, he kind of fiddled around with his vets for a bit, and then just kind of got frustrated and left them on the objective, here's where he made a couple of mistakes. He did not use the Palisade at all, to his advantage. Uh, and he put his vets in a position where they couldn't retreat. So, even though I forgot how to play the game this turn, so did my opponent. So, it all kind of worked out. So, I took the opportunity. I charged in. I activated my Flayedman. Um, Asha failed a war cry on double ones, which was going to be a theme for the rest of the game. Um, so, setting up the charge, I played the Blessed with Stone, Blessed with Steel to remove the weakened token. This is kind of the best card, best use for the card. The other situations don't come up a ton. So we can off. Um, and the vets can't retreat, so it's kind of ideal. So I go in with the Flayedman. I played Kraken's Wrath, handing out a vulnerable token. Um, but I was planning to leave it there, like 100% planning to leave it there. Because, you know, looking at my hand, I still have Roos's card. So working out for me. Charging in um, without a panic token, you know, without the panic token, surely just leave the vulnerable on if you've got the roost card. Um, so anyway, but still between crits and precision, I did seven wounds and they passed their panic check. You know, on an eight, it's reasonable. Again, that's why I didn't spend the vulnerable. Um, and again, the flayed men with minimal resources still doing seven wounds. Flayed men are silly. This is why they're going to get changed. My opponent then swung his flayed men around to sit them on the center objective. Um, I like seeing flayed men objective camp. Um, I'd rather doing it later this game, but do it in a later turn where it matters a little bit less. Um, and I know they're staying there for a bit, so that's good. Um, start of turn, Wendy heal again. Got another bless with stone. My opponent, here's where Roos put in work. My opponent tried to Tycho heal. And I just played a flayed man has no secrets, and I canceled the Tycho heal. The card is game changing when you're when people aren't used to playing into it a ton. It can just really kind of sneak up and get them. And uh, yeah, that's what we did here. Um, 
after this, Roos gave up his action to deny the bonus points on center objective, and he got the uh, score from less ranks objective. So I was on two with my Bowman, so he wasn't going to score off of Drogo, and I had more ranks with my Flavman to his vets, so I wound up getting that point as well. Um, here, at the end of the round, I pitched Bless with Stone, and I drew a Flavman Has No Secrets and Iron Price. Even though I'm feeling pretty good, um, because I always have his vets dead, my Bowman are also almost dead, he might have an overrun in his hand, he has drawn some cards at this point, so I do need to start making some plays, and I did make some misplays last round, so it's not like I'm in a perfect position. Start of the round, have to dig for what is dead, so I use my last Roderick token. Super sad. I set aside a Flayedman Has No Secrets, which feels terrible, and Iron Price to draw three cards. Um, at this point, I draw We Do Not Sow, What Is Dead, and Finger Dance, which, I mean, those are all good cards. I mean, Finger Dance doesn't really do a ton for me right now, but um, I, it's fine to see. At this point, uh, my Bowman do die. He Obviously, he puts Daenerys on the swords. Um, she gives them the rerolls and all that stuff. And I play the What Is Dead. They Unfortunately, it sucks when a unit dies before the panic check, because obviously you still need to then make the panic check. But three comes back, and then two die to panic. So, again, pretty happy. Um, Asha passes a war cry at this point, just to try to guarantee that kill. I actually wound up needing it, so it's a good thing she did. Um, Roderick took the bags, and I killed the flayed men with the We Do Not So, surging onto the objective. At this point, I'm threatening a kill on Jorah, because the flayed men are still unactivated, so he pieces out of there. Um, not a ton of other interesting stuff happens immediately. I peter on the crown using the letters, I because I don't want him to just be able to crown zap the bowman and then be able to go do other stuff with Drogo. So I peter on crowns using letters and I pulled uh, Flayman Has No Secrets and Whispered Threats. Great cards. Drogo then uses Adravat, and good thing I had that uh, Flayman Has No Secrets because I was able to cancel the Adravat. Um, which would have been very impactful on this game. The Bowmen do die, obviously, and he uses Overrun into the next unit of bows. However, got really lucky. Um, weakened tokens, saving my butt, and he only does four wounds this time. Uh, at this point, I put Wendy to the letters, using the letters, not replacing it. Um, and I draw my last one is dead, weakening his Flayedmen. He charges his Flayedmen into my bows, um, with the weakened token from Wendy taking the letters, only four more wounds. My flayed men just destroy the palisade with their action and set up for the next round. The bowmen, because I, I played slightly better this round, are able to retreat, um, and Roos tries to charge just because I wanted to get him out of my deployment zone, um, and he fails it and takes two wounds. It's not the end of the world. So that's the end of round three. It was just kind of really succinct, and there's just a lot of really obvious plays. Going into round four at this point, I am down by a point because I did lose the Bowman. Um, and we do have, it sucked going first into this round because it was the if you take a tactic zone, you score objectives. Um, so I need to start making some weird plays. So Asha Warcries passes it. Roost charges into the Flayed Men. And like I was saying before, sometimes dice happen with Blackguard. And he did seven wounds. And then my favorite thing to happen absolutely all game. Pop the order on Spread Fear, targeting Jorah, killing him. Good job, Bruce. At this point, his flayed men use Ride by Attack. Now, here's like one of the arguments we see for why we should use Blood Riders, and that's you can't Ride by Attack through somebody else's tray. Bringing a bad unit to make an okay card slightly better is not a reason to bring the unit. I just want that to be perfectly clear. Um, so the Flayman ride by attack away and do the wounds to Roos. Um, putting him on his last rank, which is insignificant now, I kind of accept that... Uh, I kind of accept that, you know, it, I, I've probably lost his unit um, after Drago's done with the Bowman. But I, I'm feeling like I can set up for later rounds in a way that'll make that somewhat okay. Uh, the Dying Bowman wound up doing two more wounds to the Flayedmen, uh, and then Drogo just turns around and annihilates them. I try the What is Dead, failing the panic check and dying. It, it happens. Um, my Flayedmen, at this point, need to get back into the game, so they move off the uh, middle, off of their objective onto the middle objective. 
and Asha just kind of moves into a position where she might be more useful later on in the game to maybe threaten to charge into Drogo and try to tie him up. At this point, we just do the usual, like, NCU pass dance. We see it a lot of these things. Um, and at this point, I, I use the horses to put the Flavemen onto the center objective, because even though I'm giving my opponent a point, I'm also then scoring an additional point. So, I'm okay with it. Um, kind of sucked. Drogo used horses to charge into Roos with Assault Orders, um, and he died. I didn't want to lose the unit that early, but it happens sometimes. Um, I'm in an okay spot. At this point, I'm then able to respond with my Flademan, uh, charging into his Flademan, and picking up the unit. Uh, BMV went into this round, sorry, I forgot to say it. The score going into this round was 5-6. It's, uh, it was feeling pretty good. Um, I was feeling pretty good about that, because I would be up Flademan, and then I can move on to the center objective. So, at this point, uh, Danny used letters. Wendy blocks swords. Roderick passes. Um... Peter uses the crown to switch two center objectives, so I'm scoring the extra points. Again, um, at this point, I really, I'm in a good spot now. I've scored a lot of points. I have more points on the field. It's 9-9 going into round six, so all I have to do, realistically speaking, is just survive. And like I was saying earlier, that really winds up being the Greyjoy's game plan sometimes. We can't always kill units like Blood Riders, as sad as that is to say. So... If we can just gum them up and then kill the things that can really do damage to us, we can just survive into the later parts of the game. So, round six. Going into it, score is 9-9. Nine, nine. Again, this isn't a super impactful round. Um, and I just really need to play KG. I need to not die going into round... Throughout round six. As long as I don't lose any units, I win the game. Uh, not a ton happens. Um, I try to score more ranks off of Asha, but she fails her charge into Drogo's unit. And uh, Drogo charge into my Flayed Men, not doing a ton. And that was pretty much the game. It's kind of boring at the end, because all I did was sit around and try to not die. But sometimes that's the way you got to play things. So, overall, uh, that's 11-11. I win minor victory points on the table. I, like I said, I made some mistakes. I played this game far from perfectly. It happens sometimes, but like in round two, I think even though I knew what my opponent was doing, it's very easy to get overwhelmed by Targaryens just kind of being in your face. Thankfully, I was able to recover with my Flayedman charge, and that made things kind of be okay. Uh, moving forward in the future, I was planning on talking about what I was planning on for my Greyjoys, um, but the patch is coming up. So I don't really see much of a point in that. Instead, I'll just be doing a bunch of videos once the patch drops on list building ideas, who I think is going to be on top, and what's going to be happening. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you've made it this far, please like, comment, and subscribe. Um, you can go ahead. You can find me on Discord as Papa Nurgle if you want to hit me up and play some TTS games. Um, you, please follow us on our social medias, Instagram, Facebook. There's going to be more channel news coming out over there. Check out our sponsors, the Bearded Dragon Games in Oneonta, New York. And please check out our friends at the All Seeing Eye Gaming. They do some absolutely fantastic RPG stuff. I'm good friends with the lead designer over there, um, Alan, and we're going to be working on some stuff together. So until I see you guys again, don't forget to have fun and roll some dice.